United Auto Workers President Bob King, thanks for joining us. James, thank it's for having me here. Now, you've been uh, talking about how you want more democracy in union elections. And uh, as I understand it, uh, people do get to vote, uh, workers do get to vote. But what you're talking about is uh, more access, more ability to come into a company and use the facilities, talk to all the workers. And I'm just wondering if democracy, uh, sort of a political analogy, is the right one here. I mean, you can't come into my house that I own and say, here's what I think we ought to do in the kitchen and here's what we ought to do in the living room. But um, I don't know. What, what are your thoughts on this? Well, our thoughts is that. That we, we, to have a democracy, you need a strong middle class. The labor movement is a critical component in making a strong middle class. And so we have a societal concern that we want workers to have a choice of whether they want to be in unions or not. We want it to be a fair choice. And in the system in America today, it's not. Workers can get go into a meeting where they're they mandatory. They have to go in the meeting because they're on the payroll for the company. They can go in that meeting. And they can hear all the reasons not to join a union. And if they even ask, want to ask a question under the current law, they, they, they aren't allowed to do that. So in, 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 the, in any kind of, to have a fair choice, you've got to be able to hear both sides. And so what we're saying is, is there's got to be equal access to the workers for them to make an informed, knowledgeable choice. But on the, the other thing the UAW is saying in our fair election principles is, this is not about being anti-company. This is not about vilifying the company. It's about can workers forming their union help to build a better company? Like right. we are with General Motors or Ford or Chrysler or in the ag amp industry or public sector we re represent workers. We're about helping the company succeed, helping the employer succeed, because we know nobody has more at stake in the success of the company than the workers do. So we want workers to have a voice, we want workers to be able to help build a better company. Okay, now a big part of your push now is uh, to try and uh, organize, uh, unionize uh, plants in the South that are uh, owned by the international auto companies. And and you've been saying that uh, that they treat their uh, workers in the U.S. as kind of second-class citizens because their plants overseas in their home countries are often unionized. Yeah, not often. Every single one of them. Every company, every foreign company that has a plant here in the U.S. in their home country, whether it's Japan, whether it's Korea, whether it's Germany, wherever it is, they work with unions, they allow workers without the kind of problems that they create here, without the kind of anti-campaigns they do here, they allow workers to join a union, and they work proactively together. Why should American workers be treated as second-class citizens well, and not given the same okay, rights? Okay, you could can, you can say second-class citizens, but uh, maybe uh, if they had to offer uh, all the benefits and, and accept all the expenses, they wouldn't move plants here. They wouldn't hire anyone in the South, right? I mean, is, isn't the reason they come over here is because at some level they feel like they can get a more productive workforce than in their home country. I think it's the same reason that Ford or GM built plants all over the world, because they, they felt that you're better being in the home market. There are transportation costs. They're uh, having a supply base where you build the facility. There are a lot of good business reasons to have facilities. Okay, fair enough. Distribution. So you might, you want uh, plants in North right. America, if right. you're moving something heavy like a car to where people are going right. to buy right. it, but uh, if these companies have had a lot of experience overseas with unions, uh, they probably uh, have learned something from that, and maybe the fact that they don't want unions in their U.S. plants is is saying that look, it, it's less competitive. Well, we have to decide as a society: do we want a democratic process? And what? But the, the, here, here's the important point: I think that we. American society in general would overwhelmingly agree that workers should have a choice and that workers should have a voice and all we want is a fair process to allow workers to do that. We think it's wrong if companies threaten to close facilities, we think it's wrong if companies reassign workers or treat workers differently because they do believe that they should have a democratic right to decide if they want a union or not. So we're advocating, we're calling on people of good conscience both in this country and around the world to really support workers having a choice and workers having a voice. Okay, uh, last question. Now, you think that the reason you're not seeing more uh, union workers in the South is that uh, there's not enough of a, a democratic process. You don't feel like it's fair. Yes. Is it possible that there's simply less demand, that workers uh, don't see the value? They think it maybe it uh, limits their upside, that it might uh, hurt the company's uh, ability to be well, profitable? Is there just less demand for, for I union I don't think membership? so. And, and there's a lot of hard data to show. For instance, the Dana Corporation, it appeared, there was a period of time when unions and Dana had an adversarial relationship. When Dana went through the 
bankruptcy, we all realize we have to work together. We have to be successful together. And as part of that process, Dana agreed that they would not run campaigns against the union, that they would allow workers to make a decision. There were like 26 plants, that, we, and the majority of them in the South, plants that when we tried to go through the NLRB process where the company had threatened to close the plant or had really intimidated workers, we didn't get enough support to win. When there was an open democratic process, and we, we were being positive about the company, the company was saying, hey, it's a worker's choice, overwhelmingly, like in less than 30 days, 60, 70, 80, 90 percent majorities signed up and said, we want the UAW. Bob King, thanks for joining us. You're welcome.